Hey cats, today I'm grading all of the shoes that I've reviewed so far in 2023. Thanks for joining me on the channel once again people do give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies it really helps out thanks to all of you that have subscribed recently we just hit 40k subs absolutely amazing i do appreciate your support you make this channel happen and keep it rolling thank you very much you know that i'm a teacher i'm a student of the midsole an enthusiast of the outsole and a voyeur of the upper as such, today I'm going to attempt to grade all of the running shoes that I've reviewed so far in 2023. I'm going to go E through to A with the pluses and the minuses and all that kind of stuff. Many a shoe to get through, so let's get to it. Kicking off with the Fuel Cell SC Trainer from New Balance. It's a big old lug, this one. A shoe I purchased on a discount, even though it wasn't all that long after release, to be honest. And I gotta say, it hasn't been used that much of recent time. I found it soft and comfortable for a while, but the fuel cell foam just doesn't really seem to work all that well for me. I figured it would be perhaps a lower weight shoe. It's got that carbon plate there, but don't really feel it all that much. Perhaps it could have been something that works for recovery runs for me, but the Invincible Run 3 is just a better shoe. And bizarrely, it comes in heavier than the Fuel Cell TC. Do you remember that one? Kind of launched around the start of the lockdown, you know, the COVID stuff. I think it was a bit overlooked. That's an absolutely great shoe. This one just leaves me wanting a better lockdown. The upper wasn't great. And just a more inviting ride, really. The shoe promised a lot, but didn't really deliver that much. So for the SC Trainer, I think I'll probably give it a D grade so far it's a good idea but if you're gonna have that very rigid plate here you need a much better upper fit maybe i'll give it another whirl soon and see if i can get something out of it but so far a expensive mistake next up the gel nimbus 25 i can't actually find the other shoe it's in here somewhere i've recently moved the studio from one room to another and it's lost somewhere I find the Nimbus 25 quite different to that fuel cell model. It's more of a firm cushion without the squash of the fuel cell. And due to that, we don't need the carbon plate underfoot. Asics did a major switch up on this shoe back in the Nimbus 24, adding more width and height to that midsole unit. And with the addition of that pure gel as well, sort of encompassed within it it's a huge departure really and it more resembles a max cushion model these days i gotta be honest i like it it's very forgiving on foot it's probably not saying i'd want to use on faster paced runs or sessions but it's absolutely a shoe for a very specific job it's kind of like the other end of the spectrum to the invincible run a much better fitting upper than the sc trainer and it's one that i will keep in the rotation once i find the other perhaps a touch warm in the upper really for summer training but i think i'll probably give it a c so far i've enjoyed all of my miles in it just need to find it the deviate nitro elite 2 from puma is next certainly one of my favorites so far this year and i'm very close to 100 miles in this one so i'll be brief and save my deep dive review for perhaps towards the end of the week stable yet nimble and a wonderful fitting upper in terms of the materials and the profile it's got the quality and the kind of looks that i want in a running shoe and it just feels good out the box as well it's not one you really need to break in i strongly believe it's a shoe you can use for daily training and for racing as well mainly due to that durability it's just a little bit more durable than some of the other models i mean how many super shoes can you say that about and it's about 50 quid cheaper than quite a lot of those other models too grade wise it's one of the best this year so i'm going to give it an a the invincible run three next an absolute banger got to 100 miles in this one very quickly and i'm very impressed actually with the durability of the shoe in terms of the outsole very little wear i mean the compression level is considerable you could say squash you could say bounce but brilliant for me in terms of a recovery type shoe but i would suggest it fits into a very specific category again like the nimbus 25 it's probably not one you're going to use for your speed sessions it was great for me when the legs and muscles were barking wanted to get some base level miles in some slower easier efforts this shoe kind of gets you out the door and gets those miles on the board certainly doesn't work at pace though i feel it's more a energy absorber than a returner i mean people talk about energy return but it's really getting a shoe that minimizes energy loss no shoes can actually give you more energy than you put in i think without those stability elements some people might find it completely unstable and unusable that certainly is quite prevalent in the comments of the channel but i gotta be honest i love it 
but it's 169 quid so it's certainly one that you need to love you can't just be on the fence about this shoe i think i'll probably give the invincible run through a grade b it's a rotation shoe certainly not a do-it-all model the Puma Forever Run Nitro is next. So there's a hint of stability here, certainly in the heel wear of the shoe. It really does cup around the back of the foot, but it's a neutral option if you don't really need those stability elements. They're not really like in your face or on your foot. I love the midsole here and that combo of foams. Firmer on the outside, softer on the inside. If you really love the Vimero 16 from Nike, then you'll probably like this shoe. A little less bulky and plush than the Nike model. I really like the profile of the shoe in terms of that midsole and outsole too. Does pick up a rock or two, but most of them do. And it's certainly one that I'm enjoying having in the rotation right now. It's doing really well durability wise as well. I'm not getting any sort of wear on the outsole. So one to check out, I'll probably give this like a B minus grade so far. It's a solid and consistent performer i just want to see how it kind of pans out as i get up towards 100 miles if you are enjoying the video today please do help me out by giving this video a thumbs up like drop us a super thanks as well up next the vaporfly next percent three uh, supposedly the best version of the shoe ever but i think probably the v1 and 2 are better so far a very expensive premium shoe that hasn't really worked out all that well for me though i do absolutely love that huge black swoosh there on the front of the shoe stretching from the midfoot down into the forefoot the upper is just so baggy and ill-fitting it's a bit like a pair of jeans that you bought that you love but they're in the wrong size that said, I've tried a smaller size and it just didn't really feel any better. Materials and design are cool, but I think it's a bit of a step backwards. Some people seem to really enjoy this update of the shoe, but I'm finding it's a bit of a downgrade, really. I'm going to give this one a D grade so far. I might try a very quick 5K, maybe a park run or something at the weekend, just to confirm my suspicions. The Float Ride Energy 5 is next from Reebok. Certainly a very low profile daily trainer, this one. Reasonably low weight and one I've been rocking casually as well, simply because I just love the profile. See, that is a great looking shoe. I won't have anything said against it. Not quite as soft as the previous versions, mainly due to that sort of plastic, almost like torsion like plate they've put in the midfoot here, perhaps to improve that sort of torsional rigidity just stops it twisting in that sort of area but it's not going to be for everyone hard to dislike the shoe really it's not a massive departure from the v4 i actually find the fits a little better the profile just a little bit more sexy need to get some more miles into this one really i've neglected it somewhat so far i'll give it a c plus at this point but there's very very little i dislike about the energy 5 the Vimazi Z40 is up next. This one has much promise on foot and wants to run at a faster pace. It's certainly not a slower option. All the miles I've put into it so far it just makes me want to run at sort of tempo speed. Kind of like marathon pace, I suppose. I guess pace tuned for a very specific reason. Really like the midsole feel. It's a mixture of that Adios 7 and perhaps the Hyperion Tempo from Brooks. Certainly a firmer offering, not going to be for everybody. I think it will appeal to a specific cross section of runners. I would go up a half size there if you think of picking up the Z40 or any of the Vamazi shoes. They seem to run more on like a sort of New Balance or Hoka sort of sizing. Only a few sessions and I had to fool around with the insoles a little bit to get them comfortable. It's more about how the insole kind of cups up around the back of the foot there, around the heel and the upper, perhaps a touch bulky, certainly if you're running in a warmer climate. There's a new company here, they're tailoring the shoes, trying to get them just right. So worth taking note of as you move forward. Feeling good at tempo pace, but a bit of a niche shoe, I suppose. So it's not going to be one that appeals to everybody. It's certainly not a daily trainer. I'll give the Vermaz EV40 a C- minus for the time being. Grade seems appropriate here till I get some more miles into them. Up next, the Hoka Rocket X2. What a shoe. It's got the soft yet springy midsole here. Of course, with the carbon insert. Provides some excellent propulsion, and I found the shoe to be really stable too. And an upper that simply hugs the foot it's perfection gotta give this like a b plus at least i do want to get a longer faster run into it to see how it shapes up i would have perhaps preferred a slightly higher drop i think we've got a five mil drop here but it's mega light and certainly worthy of some race events i've got coming up i shall use this one in the summer there's some 5ks and some 10ks just down the road 
maybe even drop into that Cardiff half marathon in October as well. Hoka took their time, but they made their mark eventually. Super shoe comparable to anything from Adidas or Nike right now. Magnifying Nitro, it's certainly a amplified version of the Nitro midsole here. Super cushioned and comfortable upper. It's impossible to get a bad lockdown with this shoe. It just really hugs the foot, but it has some real nice flexibility in the toe box. Loved all my miles in it so far. Really nice sort of cruiser, this one. Give it a B grade so far. Very minimal initial miles into this one here, the Under Armour Flow Velocity Elite. Need a bit more time perhaps to form some opinions, but I can run damn fast in this one. Really love the midsole, that firmer layer underneath, and then the crushed up P-back stuff on top. It's at least worthy of a B- minus so far. I think that's only going to go upwards though. A lot of potential here. One last one there, Pegasus 40. Only got this in last week. Managed to get a few miles into it. If you like the Pegasus 39, you'll like this shoe. Same midsole and outsole is little to dislike. A nice consistent C-grade performer. It's as consistent as the rumours every single season that Harry Kane will leave Spurs. So that's my grades for every shoe that I've reviewed so far in 2023. What do you make of my comments and scores? Give me your grades for the shoes you've been using in your rotation so far in 2023 down in the comments. I'm not really sure there's been a shoe that's been particularly terrible so far. I really don't have the time or money or energy really to waste on shoes that just aren't going to work for me at all. Kind of put those to the side and let someone else review them. I want to bring shoes to you that I think you can get something out of and that I actually might get something out of. I'm not just going to buy some load of old rubbish because it might make an interesting video i've got enough shoes to be going on with to be bringing in stuff that i just don't want to use or buy musical interlude time i've been listening a lot to one of my favorite albums black monk time by the monks now this sort of music won't be for everybody you've got to try to imagine this now you've got drums you've got banjo this bass a little guitar and then some sort of monk chanting over the top your best bet is to actually go to youtube and search for the monks is a fantastic german performance i think that's from around 1965 66 you will get the full monks experience there with their special outfits and haircuts and ginormous tambourines as well that's what you need higgle die piggle die is one of my favorite tracks although i hate you is also another really good one kind of menacing in fact the way the track starts off you really need to listen to this stuff it, words just don't do it justice anything by the monks thanks for tuning in people hope you enjoyed the show hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies my name's ed bud and i'll be seeing you